The nature of our sleep changes considerably at every stage of life, as well as at times of challenge, change and crisis. But its impact on our health, overall well-being and ability to learn and function effectively is a constant. Sleep has traditionally not been treated with the respect it deserves and indeed in some cases getting adequate sleep has been seen as a weakness. That's why Cognita feels so passionately about shining a spotlight on it and it's a topic we've looked at with a number of experts in recent times. Covid has impacted all aspects of life including sleep for many families. This video brings together some key advice from these experts at a time when the issue is more important than ever. Matthew Walker explains the universal power of a good night's rest. You really have to be very mindful of sleep in terms of, you know, it creating this wonderful architecture and this complex architecture that is called, you know, the living brain. And we often forget is that sleep is essential for the immune system. But sleep every night essentially restocks the armory of your immune system. The COVID-19 pandemic is an extreme and global crisis, which is hugely demanding on our physical and mental health. So it's no surprise that many people have been experiencing disrupted sleep during this time. Following um, some kind of traumatic event, um, the people in that traumatic event will report significant sleep disturbance. So we have got quite a lot of research that came out post 9-11. Interestingly, during the 2008 global financial crash, um, there, people working in the, finan in the finance sectors particularly, um, there was quite a lot of research done and people talked about sleep disturbance. So sleep is disturbed in times of heightened stress and anxiety and trauma. One of the phenomena that seems to be coming out at the moment is people are saying they're dreaming more. And that is because people are generally doing more rapid eye movement sleep. So REM sleep is one part of the full sleep cycle. So the non-REM, the light to deep three stages of sleep is reparative sleep. That's when we just sleep because we're tired and we need to repair and restore. And because we're all less active, we're doing less of that sleep and we're doing more of the dream sleep, the REM sleep. And because we're more anxious, we're doing more of the dream sleep. And some people are finding their anxiety is playing itself out in dreams. So this is all actually very natural. And building our knowledge of what impacts our sleep is vital so we can understand what we can do to help ourselves, our children and our families. Matthew Walker talks us through some of his top tips for healthy sleep. So probably one of the, the best tips is to make sure that you get outside during the day and you get lots of sunlight, lots of daylight. So go out, have a good time with your friends, be outside, riding your bike, physical activity. That really helps your sleep at night. One of the things that you can do to really help stick to a routine and never deviate from it. And that routine is not just about timing, although timing is a critical component, going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time, that's essential. But also doing the same things over and over because the body and the brain, especially when we're young, they love habits, they love routines. I think the other thing is try to be a little bit mindful of taking too much stuff into your bedroom. So things like, you know, if you have maybe a phone or an iPad, Try to keep those things outside of the bedroom. Mm. Sometimes, even when we've prepared well for bedtime, we struggle to fall asleep. But clinical psychologist, Dr. Bill Mitchell, has some simple techniques to try. From a cognitive point of view, if we wake in the middle of the night, we are on a crossroads and many people find themselves drifting down the frustration pathway. Why have I woken? Why can't I sleep through? If I don't get back to sleep, I won't be able to function tomorrow. The second pathway is the acceptance pathway. Accept you're in the bed. Accept it is comfortable and warm. Accept there are no pressures on you right now. Accept you've had four hours sleep and you'll get by on that. Go through your body gently, muscle group by muscle group. Your arms, your shoulders, your forehead, mouth, legs. Relax each in turn. Very slowly, do a countdown from 20. Encouraging, relaxing phrases as you go through it. Being a parent is not always easy and you certainly cannot win every battle. 
However, helping your family develop good sleep habits is probably the most important lesson you will teach, given the extraordinary impact sleep has on every element of physical and mental health and development. Notice the impact it has on mood, relationships and overall well-being in your house could really help you prioritise sleep for your whole family. It's not a special treat or some sort of luxury, so be kind to yourself and reframe sleep in your mind as a fundamental need for body and mind.